I bet you didn't know one of the weirdest ways they carried out humiliating punishment in medieval times. It was mainly practiced in Europe. I'm talking about tarring and feathering. The victim would be taken and completely stripped of their clothes in public. Then they would take a bucket of hot tar and either pour it directly on the victim or paint it onto their skin. Now hot tar is pretty hot, like hot enough to burn your skin off. So imagine having your whole body painted with this, but it gets worse. Pretty much to add insult to injury at this point, they would then throw a ton of chicken feathers onto the person being punished. And as the tar started to cool and they could start being peeled from the body, it would take hair and skin with it. And if you don't know, tar is extremely hard to get off. So I would think potentially they could be covered in tar for days. And there were cases of when they removed the tar, it took up the skin and caused severe infection. People have lost limbs, developed severe bodily infections. Sometimes it would even be fatal, but that was a pretty rare occurrence. Those who had experienced tar and feathering, they were left permanently scarred. I bet you didn't know the breaking news of the tragic incident that happened at a San Francisco hospital. Kaiser's Santa Clara Medical Center. Halfway through his shift at this hospital, an unnamed man took his own life in a storage room. According to nurses, this isn't as uncommon as we'd think. They were simply saying, yet another decided to do this. 30 minutes away at another hospital, something very similar happened back in January. This took place while 5,000 nurses are on strike in the San Francisco Bay Area. They're fighting for safe staffing, wage increases, safer working environments, and proper mental health services. This is a counter offense for the years of burnout and overworking at these hospitals. Countless nurses and healthcare providers are burnt out and completely overwhelmed. They said Kaiser is notoriously bad with their mental health services. They aren't properly provided to the staff. They said, of course, they're devastated about the loss of their coworker, but they know he'll just be replaced before his body's ever even buried. A study shows that 70% of healthcare workers suffer from depression and anxiety. 38% have symptoms of PTSD and 15% have thoughts of hurting themselves. With the ongoing pandemic, there has been a lot of stress on medical care workers. Many of them are overworked. Many hospitals are understaffed and they aren't getting the adequate help that they need. I mean, it has to be pretty bad if someone takes their own life in the middle of a work shift. It's an absolute tragedy. And I am a major advocate for places having proper mental health resources because way more people struggle with it than those who don't. And it should be taken far more seriously. So the San Francisco Bay Medical District needs to get it together and care about their staff that is out there saving lives because their lives are just as valuable too. I bet you didn't know about the serial killer known as the Giggling Granny. Nanny Doss was responsible for killing 11 people and they were all people very close to her. Nanny was born in 1905 to a young unmarried mother named Louisa. Nanny never knew who her biological father was, but her mother Louisa married a man named James Hazel. Turns out James reasoning for marrying a woman who had a child out of wedlock to have extra hands helping on his farm. He was very abusive and controlling. Nanny was forced to work every single day and wasn't allowed to go to school. By the time Nanny was six, she had four half siblings, all fathered by James. From the young age of six, it was Nanny's responsibility to take care of her four siblings. When she was seven, she had a head injury from a train accident. For years, she had severe headaches, blackouts, and depression. But James refused to let her get medical treatment because she was not his biological child. When she was 15 is when Nanny met her first husband. His name was Charlie and they married after being together for four months. Charlie's mom also lived with them. She was very cruel and demanding, nitpicking everything that Nanny did. Nanny assumed if she had children, things would get better. She gave birth to Melvina and Florine and two other children as well. Now Charlie stayed cheating on Nanny. 
Sometimes he'd be gone days at a time. One time he came back and noticed a bunch of mourners outside of his home. Two of his daughters had died. Nanny had put rat poison in their morning porridge. No one blamed Nanny, but Charlie got really uncomfortable. So he took their daughter Malvina and fled. Nanny was left caring after Charlie's mom. So she put rat poison in her prune stew. Got rid of her. Nanny got married again, this time to Frank. Frank was an abusive alcoholic. At that point, her daughter Malvina had two children of her own. When her second child was born, Nanny was up at the hospital with her. When no one was looking, she shoved a hat pin into her brand new grandson's head. He died. Malvina ended up having a breakdown and leaving her other child in the care of Nanny. Well, she made rat poison cookies and killed off that grandson too. Then she poisoned Frank's whiskey. She got with her third husband, Arlie. This happened during the flu pandemic. And sure enough, Nanny poisoned him with rat poison too. She got news that her stepsister was sick, so she brought her into her care, only to poison her as well. Then Nanny's mother, Louisa, moved in with her. She decided she was too demanding. So just like everyone else, she poisoned her too. So then there was Nanny's fourth husband, Richard. She suspected him of cheating and poisoned him. Her final husband, Samuel Doss, when she poisoned him, they performed an autopsy and the truth came out. Nanny described all her murders while giggling like crazy. She had no remorse. She loved people feeling sorry for her. And she died in prison in 1965. I bet you didn't know about the 17-year-old boy who massacred his whole family because of a curfew disagreement. His name is Raymond Childs Jr. It all started because there was a disagreement. Raymond wanted to spend the night at his girlfriend's house. His father told him he needed to get home. So Raymond showed back up, only to leave again. Raymond knew he would be in trouble for sneaking back out to go to his girlfriend's house. So he went back home and did the unspeakable. He shot both his parents, Raymond and Kezi killing them both, then killed his 18-year-old brother Elijah, 13-year-old sister Rita, and then Kiara. She was 19 and nine months pregnant. Her baby was due in less than a week. Her and her unborn child didn't make it. His 15-year-old brother was shot at but was able to flee the scene and get help. He was injured but the only one to survive. Raymond's 15-year-old brother heard their dad's last words. They were, I'm sorry Raymond, I love you. As his 15-year-old brother was running for his life, he begged Raymond not to kill him. He even tried bribing him with $40 not to. He said he wouldn't tell on him, but that didn't stop Raymond. Because Raymond was a child when this crime was committed, he's not eligible for the death penalty, but he will face 45 to 60 years each for every person he murdered. He is currently in jail awaiting trial. I bet you didn't know about the Sauter children disappearance. This video suggestion came from IcyCun. They sent me a tip and then told me what they wanted me to do a TikTok on. I'll explain how you can do that at the end of this TikTok. December 24th, 1945. A fire destroyed the home of the Sauter family. George and Jenny Sauter were inside, along with nine out of their 10 children. Jenny, George, and four of the children were able to escape. The other five just seemed to disappear. At first, investigators told them, oh, their bodies just burnt up. But everything else in the house was still noticeable. Bodies certainly wouldn't be totally disintegrated from a house fire. But no bodies were ever recovered from the scene. Investigators tried to say, oh, it was an electrical fire. But when that was looked into, that also wasn't the case. Their phone lines had also been cut. When they tried to escape in their truck, it had also been tampered with. A ladder, which was originally leaning against the home, was found 75 feet away in an embankment. A man was seen stealing from the property when the fire started. He was questioned and admitted to being a thief, but they had nothing connecting him to the fire. The Sauter family truly believed that their children were still alive. There's also speculation that the Sicilian Mafia had something to do with this because of George's very outspoken opinion and criticism of the fascist government back in his home of Italy. Some people claim they saw these children at a rest stop the next day. Another woman said as she was standing there watching the house fire, she looked over and the children were peering out of the window of a car. There have been many assumptions made, but still to this day, no one knows what happened to those five children. If they were still alive, if they were kidnapped, if there was some sort of foul play by the family, 
No one knows what truly happened and we'll never know without knowing where those five children are. You have a specific story or subject you want me to do a TikTok on? You can go to my page and send me a tip. If the button isn't available, you can also use my Venmo and Cash App. Just make sure you include your username in the message. I'll follow you back and send you a message. Then you can tell me what you would like for me to do a TikTok on.